Good morning. Happy National Quilt Day. And for us, it's International Quilt Day. Um, but actually, every day is Happy Quilt Day. <laughs> so, but we're celebrating with everybody else. They made a national holiday, so we're we're good. That that's absolutely fabulous that everybody is bringing attention to quilts. Um, Take some time to go to the Quilt Alliance website. There's some really wonderful stories. There's some great information on SACWA, Studio Art Quilt Association with lectures and lots of podcasts out there about quilting. Uh, quilting arts, which always are can have some great articles and lots of my friends that are involved in that. There's a wonderful podcast. So visit a museum, hang your quilt outside, the, you know, just spend time quilting today and enjoy the day. So we hope everybody is um, going to have a fabulous quilt day. So I have, I get asked a lot when I travel, I have samples and, and in the store and online, it's like, okay, you sell all this stuff, but the funky stuff, not the fabric stuff. Fabric stuff is pretty straightforward, but the funky stuff, do you really use it? Well, I think some of you may have heard this before, but the store and the business evolved with the um, collection of vintage and buttons and miscellaneous hardware and nuts and bolts and all that kind of stuff. It's where the store started because that's what I use. I use a lot of vintage in my textiles. I hand dye things. I stitch things on there. I'm doing things with taking fabric off the wall or I'm putting it on the wall. I'm taking it off the bed. Let's put it that way. Um, so that I wanted to show you a couple of quilts that I considered mixed media quilts. Now, as time has evolved, I started when I was um, really had never taken a quilt class. Honestly, never took a quilt class. I just put multiple layers of quilt together, the fabric together. Um, somebody told me to put batting in front of it. I went, um, and so I just kind of went from there. Now, as I have progressed into today's quilting, I'm making quilts more for the store, not as many as Chris, but more for the store than I am. So I'm more into piecing and um, blo putting blocks and having things kind of uh, be correctly assembled on some days. Um, so I don't get as much time to work with my mixed media pieces. Um, the last time Sacred Threads was held here, um, my, I had a very large piece that was almost, it's uh, hanging on my wall, it was too large to bring. Um, that is all mixed media, indigo, rust, old pictures, old trinkets of a woman's life. And, and I, that was the first time in a number of years that I really had been able to get back to my mixed media roots, which is really where I want to be. So I'm going to show you some of the things that are my favorites, uh, why I tried to do them the way that I did, and um, maybe inspire you to try something different with your quilt. So this piece was one of my first. Um, this so I made, I actually have a label on it. I made it in 2004. That was when I started quilting that year. And I had a class with Laura Cater Woods. I had a secret weapon that lived in my neighborhood named uh, Cindy. And so I kind of, and I guess I had another third, third secret weapon, oops, sorry, Kyle, is I was part of a guild. And so the guild, I went go, I was able to go on some retreats. So this is three layers, it is stripped. You can see my very beginning of free motion. Um, I've used a vintage linen with buttons. So I created fabric, linen, and buttons. And I have to tell you, red is a very, very important color to me and my family. Whether they're aware of it or not, red's been in our family for a really long time. So my mom had red carpet. My mom had red carpet with houndstooth sofas. Um, then we had red sofas and then 
We had Electrodyne, which the theme color, that was the p business that my parents built. The color theme was red. Then we had my um, parents, no, my mother's race car that my father drove. That was red. Everything was red. So when it came to creating artistic artifacts, that is why we have red in the logo because it is a color that's important to the family. And this piece was um, in my headers of the website for a long time. This was actually one of the pieces that we added to it. Um, I had no clue how to do a binding and I, <laughs> I love telling this story. I don't know if Cindy remembers it. But Cindy lived in my neighborhood, so I, I said, oh, I got something, but I, I need some help with it. So I ran over to her house, and I said, okay, so what do I do? I didn't have any of these circles or anything there. And she looked at it and looked at it, and she's like, okay, be nice. She's like, looked at it, looked at it. She said, it's an interesting combination of things. Why don't you fuse the edges? I'm like, okay, sure. And I, well, and I ran home. And so this was my fusing. So I took pieces and I fused them on both sides. So this is a piece of fabric that had fusible in it. I'm sure I did not know about Misty Fuse at that point in time. And I folded it in half and I fused this edge. And then I fused this edge and then I fused this edge. I ran back over to the Cindy's house. I said, ah, oh, I did it, I did it. She looked at it, she looked at it, she looked at it. She goes, okay then. Not exactly what I meant, but you did fuse it, didn't you? So this one has some very nice memories. And it really was the beginning of what Artistic Artifacts is now. Um, I had participated in a gallery in the Torpedo Factory for a number of years. And it was a co-op, so we submitted work. And I, you, it always had to be fiber. So one of the things that I did was I did fabric jewelry. And that, I did a lot of beading. So this piece actually started out as a necklace. It lived a very short life because I was not very happy with it. So here's your original pieces of the necklace. This motif and these fabric beads. Everything I did was painted and fabric beads. So it's like, okay, so how can I repurpose this and how can I make it saleable for um, being in the gallery? So I took a canvas, so I have a canvas. I did put batting on it and I laid this batik over top of it. Then I created, this is actually a quilt and you can see I have it fused and by then I did know about Misty Fuse, you can tell. And that was a little bit tricky fusing to this canvas. It was really hard to get the iron hot enough. And then I created this piece here which is just painted with acrylic paints. So I just slapped paint on a piece of fabric and moved it around with a gift card and that became my background. So then what do I do to pull it all together? Uh, so I started, I stitched it first, which you can see I'm, I'm, I'm still not into straight lines, so I'm still into curves. And then I added beading. So the beading is multiple layers of beads in there. And then I layered the, this quilt, this quilt to this piece that is the frame. So our, our, the theory was in the co-op gallery is that if you could, to compete with painters, they're always working on a canvas, then let's try to put our fabric and our artwork, uh, fiber artwork onto a canvas. And that was my thinking when I did that. It, um, and this is also kind of the introduction to what the bead mixes are that we sell. So the bead mixes came right out of my bead storage. So I would take, I'm one of those people, I don't bead by size, I bead by color and shape, and I put it all into the same container, which is, you know, those nuts and bolts and screw container plastic things. And I pull the drawer out and I just sift through and there, dive through. So as soon as I buy beads in those nicely stored containers that have the size on it, I open them up and I pour them into my drawers. And that's, so that's where that product came from. It's, it is what I use to this day. 
So, uh, do we have any questions so far, Kyle? No, uh, just lots of hearts. People okay. checking in, saying hello. Okay, hi, hi. All right. Chris says good morning to everybody. Mm -hmm. Ellen Young says hello. Ellen, your yeah. mother. Grandma, mom. hi. Grandma, hi. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> says hi, Grandma. <laughs> Megan Nicole. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Hi, Megan. Megan's in the Midwest. Um, good. We, we have people from all over, so I really thank you for joining us. Um, I have a tendency to talk too fast, so, you know, shout out by putting a message in there. If you have a question, I'll do my best to answer my questions. So this piece, um, these kind of were done at the same time. And this, the left hand one is really not a quilt at all, but I was into experimenting with canvases. So I had these canvases, somebody else had painted something on them and I figured, okay, well, we'll just paint over them. So I took, this is all uh, woodblock printed collage paint that was there. And the inspiration really was the indigo and these vintage um, Japanese oriental images. Um, so that I wanted to pull them out of the drawer and show them. So I do have them on indigo fabric. So the layers are, papers and paint on the canvas. This is Japanese indigo fabric and then these papers that were um, vintage pieces as well, Asian. But that I don't really call that a quilt. It just kind of is its partner is the quilted one. So this one, you can see I used the paint and canvas. So it's, it's a background and it was painted. That was a lot of fun because you just collage and paint and keep going until you get to some colors that you like. I wanted to use this vintage postcard, which I think was transferred with paper Solvi. So a lot of times I use transfer artist paper. I do use a technique that Liz Kettle developed, which is paper Solvi transfer. And then this is some Asian fabric and this is silk paper. So you can, I took the silk paper and adhered it to this. And then I just have trinkets. I have drawers that some drawers might have hearts in it, might have shells in it, might have birds in it, might have fish in it. I just have these little mini drawers with all of these kind of like things together. So this one I would consider a quilt because I have this layer that's in here. But it is with silk paper. And silk paper is another thing that we sell a lot of the um, silk roving, the textile medium, and, and that type of thing. Um, let me move this one out of the way. So this piece is again a vintage picture, which I adore orphan photos. And then there are hand dyed pieces that are in here. So I was creating this and so it's, it qualifies as a quilt because this could hang by itself. And I have, so watch parts, ribbons, buttons. I have colossal amount of buttons. Um, hand dyed trims. And then there was something turned up in the warehouse and it was an old vintage suitcase. I don't really remember exactly where it came from, but this is a piece of a suitcase that I just cut the fabric. I just cut it right out of the suitcase. So this made our, my mount. And I did put a, um, sorry, I'm gonna switch it again. I do have a hanging device on it that is attached to this piece. And this has allowed me to take this metal piece here and attach more stuff with some ribbons. And I just was really loved how this turned out. And eye pieces. Um, this is printed on EQ printables. This could be out of our inspiration packs that you could take one inspiration pack and pull this off. It would, it would give you the idea. So look at some of your family photos or some of those ones that you like because you can make a pretty quick little mini quilt with something that might be a picture rather than going to a whole wall quilt with the whole anniversary or the whole lifetime you could pick something that's very special and make a little quilt just by um, 
placing that picture in the middle of the quilt. All right. Okay, you're probably gonna wanna come back here, Kyle. So we'll start with the numbers quilt. This was again, another one that was done very early. 2010, um, I'm still painting fabric because I was painting fabric to work with my fabric beads because they had to be changed, it had to be hand of the artist. And so I was making fabric for that. So I actually took these painted pieces of fabric. This was a rubber stamp, probably used stays on ink there. And I stamped it after I just made some color pieces. Uh, probably was one big piece, maybe it was a half a yard, or it could have just been a scrap at that point in time. And I found these numbers that you used to have in the grocery stores. And we still actually have some of these numbers and letters. I love them, they're metal, so they slid in to create a sign. And I'm always looking for those, like I found this pin later that had a number on it that was probably a laundry pin. This fabric I absolutely love with the numbers and everything on it. And these are old pieces with um, it, some African beads and that moves around. I like to hang things off of that as well. You can see I got a better idea on binding and I actually wrote words on here. So this is probably another one where I picked it up and ran over to Cindy's going, how do I do this? And so we first talked about writing it out, which I'm not sure I can tell you what I wrote on here yet. <laughs> so, um, and I wrote them out, I wrote them out, and then I stitched them. Um, it would be nice to know what they say now. Nah, I can't even kid you. <laughs> But that was a finished, and it was, the words were written with purpose. But you can see, I'm getting a little better here. My, my edges are kind of lined up. I know how to do binding, and I've, I've gone a little bit forward in my quilt learning at that point in time. This piece was also shown in Sacred Threads. Um, that's pretty much the, the my favorite show to go to and to participate. Artistic Artifacts does support that. We are a sponsor. And it is a wonderful opportunity to submit the, to that show as well as to visit it. So um, it is coming up this summer and we hope that you'll, it's worth making a trip. It's worth spending a weekend coming to the, the suburbs of Washington DC for this show. Then we had, um, we had a couple of authors locally who had issued challenges out to the world and they then subsequently wrote books. Uh, so Donna was one, and I did participate in a couple, and then it was at the time the business was growing and I just couldn't do it anymore. So this piece is found in um, the, her Beatles book, inspired by the Beatles. And this was an old picture that my mom found in Florida that's just black and white women in the band which I thought was appropriate and you can see I've done layers again and if you look closely these are white so what you're seeing with the pink that is this fabric coming from behind it so I was able to print it and have this three-dimensional coloring in from this vintage cotton so again a millinery I am a, a hoarder of millinery as well as buttons and beads this pieces I mean and these I just kind of stitched on so they don't always happen at the same time I will keep things together as I'm working on a, an idea but then I might um, you can see I did this piece so let's see this is vintage and I put it on a white backing so I started with a white base that's quilted and bound. Then I layered things. And with this one, I think I did, th there's some machine stitching here. And that was probably to keep the layers together. 
I learned from a previous quilt that if you're using vintage lacy things, you have to pin it up so it stays up. So these are decorative, but there's also a purpose for them. And that makes a big difference. I learned that one because I was not holding the, the linen up. These are cuffs. This is uh, millinery, and these are just hand stitched in behind here. There's some little bit of hand stitching. So they're, they're still loose. They can move. Um, I'm probably a quilt exhibitor's nightmare, but that's okay. I'm making art for me. Then I have some vintage pieces. I have a piece of paper back here, music paper, that was fused to here. And then I have some rhinestone. Again, I love using pins. This is a pin. I don't take the pin apart. I just pin it to my quilt. If there's any way that it's already got an attachment to it, I use it. Then down here, this is a very old piece of uh, ribbon that I got from my grandmother's house. And this is some beautiful lace, another pin. This was a bow tie trim. And I stuck all this paper in here so it would be a backdrop. So I'm mixing paper with the fabric as well as the dyed items and the vintage trims. So this is one of my favorite pieces. I, I love this. All right, then for my last piece, Cindy and I, uh, when the business open held two challenges, uh, we were traveling, uh, we both were able to hand out these packs. We took a tailor's um, supplies and then uh, we got lace one time. So we were able to hold two challenges. One was called Power Suits and my power suit is all about the suffragettes. And there was lots of, we had, it was just a great experience. People from all over uh, the US, I think we had some Canadians that sent pieces to be part of that. The second challenge that we did was Arts and Old Lace. And this is my piece from Arts and Old Lace that I loved. And it is, it was started with a vintage, um, it's not really corset. I don't know that, well, there is some ribbing in it. But this is a whole piece of clothing. And it was a woman's undergarment. And that is what started the piece, is I was trying to figure out some way to include the garment to the piece of art. So I found this fabric. This is, this is vintage also. It's, it's kind of like bark cloth. And I created that background. And there is some stitching on there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm still doing circles because that's the only thing I know how to do. And I created the background first. And then I started, layered my undergarment on there. And then I had luckily just dyed this piece of vintage linen. And these are all mother of pearl buttons that are sewn on there. And then the jewelry, let's see. This is a bracelet that's just tacked on there. This is a pin. And then I have millinery, which I already told you I hoard millinery. So that's in there. So let's see what the layers are. So here's the corset, if it was really a corset. There's, this is brown vintage lace underneath it. This is hand dyed trim. It needed some color, so I took some of the regular netting in a blue so that it would pull this from there. This is a piece of vintage hat uh, piece, uh, ribbons, another pin, hand dyed, and then this was a little piece I think I took off a dress or came off a dress. So it's, again, most of what I create is multi-layer and um, so I'm trying to build that out. So maybe you can see the picture far away, but when you come up, you come and look at things. And then the last piece is, so I had the whole quilt done, and I'm like, oh, I have this big blank spot. What do I do? And I'm looking, I'm looking. And a girlfriend had given me these. I had three of these pictures. This is a picture you hang on the wall. I'm just like, okay, it's perfect. So I took it off the wall, and I hung it on the quilt. So it worked perfectly. Um, 
So there, that's what I call mixed media fiber art. Um, somebody might have a different, different description or definition, but for me, that's what it's about. I have experience in a lot of fiber arts. I've tried a lot of different things, but this one seems to encompass what's important to me and what brings me joy when I'm working on things. So it's my little mini quilt show for you today on National Quilt Day. Is everybody good? <clears throat> yeah. No questions? Tons of hearts. We had a question about um, if you used music paper. Um, lots of people like me. Yeah. You can use, the trick with paper is to put Misty Fuse behind it and maybe fuse it to a muslin and it makes it a little bit stronger and it'll last a little bit longer. So, because over time paper's gonna crumble. So you do have to watch that. Some of the um, pieces that I use that are silk and really, really old ribbons, I will Misty Fuse them and I will give them a foundation before I use them in my piece. The piece that I was talking about earlier, that's a very large where I used indigo and I have rusted fabrics. Well, you know, rust, it's gonna continue to rust. So I actually misty fuse them and place them on a lightweight muslin just to try and give them some um, stability and maybe hope that they last a little bit longer. All right, so in honor of National Quilt Day or International Quilt Day for us, we are we have some a collection of cantha quilts in the store and on comments sold so if you have the app for comments sold which you can go and get at the app store if you haven't it's you go to your app store android or apple find artistic artifacts and download it you can shop any of those items that are on there we have adjusted the price to sale make a sale for these Cantha quilts, they're regularly $125. We have priced them at $79.99. We pick them for you. You can order them comments sold or you can come to us today in the store. It is a one day only sale and we wanted to give you an opportunity to make quilt day an international quilt day. So uh, we have more comments sold coming up. That's going to be the oh vintage fabrics which okay i have a collection of that too but i'm all ready to share it with you we have another facebook live coming up that will be kathy lincoln and embroidery and we're trying to do one of those a month and we have started to open up our classroom and there are some classes in place i'm teaching a journal class at the beginning of april it's a two-day class and uh, very intensive we'll get a lot you'll get exposed to a lot of different things um, the, the, yeah, it's two days, so we'll, we'll be packed full. We have some quilting classes going on. We have a fabulous uh, treat uh, duo that's coming to teach batik. They are from Indonesia. They come, uh, when they come, they make sure Artistic Artifacts is on their route. That there is a two-day class for that as well. It's up on the website and it is limited to 15 people. So uh, if you have any interest in it at all, please don't wait because seats are going quickly for that. All right, I guess I'll leave you with National International Quilt Day and hope that you enjoy your day and we wish you a creative endeavor today. Thanks.